up, everybody? The Mandalorian is back, and it didn't lose a single beat in its two-year absence. Before we get into it, I'm going to give my one and only spoiler warning. We'll be discussing the direct events of the episode, so if you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and save this video for later, and come back after you've seen the great start to Season 3. Before you go, I'll let you know I will give this episode a 9 out of 10. I truly think it was a great start to the season, and this show is going to be something special. Now let's get into the breakdown. We start off with the armorer and her Mandalorians who are amongst a crowd getting ready for a foundling to receive his helmet and his initiation. But during that, they're attacked by what for all intents and purposes I'm going to call a Mosasaur because that's what it reminded me of. But as they're attacked and seemingly defeated as they're heavily outmatched, Din swoops down in the N1 Starfighter, and in one of the first two amazing action sequences in the Starfighter, absolutely obliterates the beast. After that, we go into hyperspace, and while they're in hyperspace, Grogu actually sees a band of Purgle, and if you've watched Star Wars Rebels, you know what these beasts are, but if you haven't, they have a direct connection to Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra Bridger, which also means a direct connection to the Ahsoka show. These whales are able to travel through hyperspace in their natural movements, and I bet this is not the last time we're going to be seeing them in live action, and it's more of a test to get the general audience used to them, and it's kind of a crazy concept if I'm going to be honest. Once we're done with the Pergo, we land on Navarro, where we once again meet Grief Karga. He has now fully embraced his royalty and actually reformed Navarro into a prospering trading post. Him and Mando reconnect, but just as they're getting comfortable, pirates arrive as they're trying to drink at the bar that Grief has turned into a school, and it causes a pretty big showdown between Grief, Mando, and the pirates, which results in Mando gunning down four of the five, sending the fifth away back to the fleet that will be seen later. But before we take care of the pirates, Mando has business that needs to be taken care of on Navarro, and that's where we meet some Unzlin, the species of Babu Frick from the sequel trilogy, who are assisting Mando in putting IG-11 back together so that he can help Din explore the ruins of Mandalore. This is of course after a failed attempt by Din where the IG unit resorts to its original programming from season 1 of the show which was of course to eliminate Grogu. However, they require additional parts to fix the IG unit so Mando is once again on his way and he runs into the rest of the pirates and it's actually a whole fleet of them. He maneuvers through an asteroid field and takes out the fleet starfighters as his modified N1 is simply too fast for them. As he approaches the command ship, Mando sends the N1 into turbo and zips right past them and into hyperspace once again. Finally, in the last bit of the episode, we arrive on Kalamala, which we learn is in the same system as Mandalore and is the home of the castle of Bo-Katan. We reconnect with her as well, but she is not the same helping hand as when we last saw her in the season 2 finale. She's visibly upset by the events that went down in the season finale with Din getting the Darksaber and is not hiding it one bit as she's being incredibly cruel. But that's not it. She also lost every single one of her followers after she returned without the Darksaber and she is now completely alone and tells Din that since he has it, he should go lead her people. After he informs her that he is indeed heading to Mandalore, she sends him off with a sinister farewell that teases she knows he will be in serious danger once he lands on their home world, but she does not feel the need to warn him or help him one bit. But that will be resolved in another episode. As for this episode, I think it did a great job getting everybody back up to speed with what's been going on, but it didn't linger on it for too long. It also sets up the larger conflict with the pirates coming back to Navarro that we see in the trailers and gives another tease to the rivalry we will see in this season between Din and Bo-Katan. I'll also slip in, they did address the absence of Gina Carano's Cara Dune as Magistry Karga informs Din that she was promoted to special forces for bringing in Moff Gideon. I do think this was the best way to handle it, but it does leave the door open for potential return if both sides can come to an agreement. With all that in consideration, I really enjoyed this season premiere, but I want to know what you thought about it, so let me know what you liked and didn't like in Chapter 17 of The Mandalorian, and make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the rest of my coverage of Season 3, as well as daily news 
and theories, and of course, have a great day.